Hey everybody, welcome back to Code a Responsive Website with Bootstrap 3. This video is called Coding the Tab Markup. In this video, we are going to learn how to use Bootstrap 3 to create these awesome tab sections like this. Uh, this is a really cool Bootstrap 3 feature. It lets you do uh, really cool things with your content without having to know or write a lot of CSS and JavaScript, which you would have to if you wanted to create this by hand. So Bootstrap 3 lets you access this sort of cool functionality super easy within minutes. So let's uh, let's get started by doing that. We're going to do this section right here. Open up your HTML in your code editor and scroll down to the more info section right here. The row with more uh, the idea of more info. So the more info section wraps uh, this whole section right here. This is more info, but this is a six column section and this is a six column section that gives it the half and half sort of look. So six columns plus six columns equals 12 columns and that's what we want. So right here we're going to work on this six column section which is the tabbable content. Let's start by adding the div with the class of call small six or call sm or call dash sm dash dash six. That's hard to say. And close that tag because there's gonna be a lot of HTML in between here and you don't want to get lost. Call small six. Save that. Let's keep it nice and simple and add a level three heading. Neat tabbable content. All right, here comes the bootstrap div class tabbable. Close that. Inside tabbable. This is where we start adding our tabbable content. So first we're going to add the nav tabs, those little tabs at the top. That's going to be an unordered list and the unordered list is going to have the class of nav and nav-tabs. Let's add a list item. Oops. And this list item is going to have the class of active because the first one will be active and jQuery by default, the JavaScript plugins that are included with Bootstrap, the Bootstrap files will do the rest. So you need to just give the first one the class of active, and you're good to go from there. There is an a tag within the h uh, a tag within the list item, and the href will be tab one. We'll get there in a minute. There's actually going to be a tab with the ID of tab one, so that's what that will select. So let's add a data attribute, uh, an attribute called data toggle. And that will be tab. So toggle the tab. And the text within this a tag, uh, the a tag will be section one. Save that. Copy and paste that. Take out the class of active on the second item. Or if you have four or five items, take them all out except for on the first one. This will be tab two. Section two. Save that. And let's just see if that gives us anything. So, uh, no, nothing. Just a couple of links right here with some background hovers. But that's okay. We'll get there. Okay, and let's add a div with the class of tab dash content. Close that div. So, this is the content that the tabs will toggle. So, another div inside this tab content. Give it the class of tab dash pane and active. So this is the active one, just like the first tab uh, is the active tab. Give it the ID of tab one. Hence this href right here, tab one, the ID of tab one, it's selecting this tab right here. So this content right here. So tab one selects the ID of tab, uh, the first tab selects the ID of tab one. Hopefully I made sense. Within this div, let's add a level four heading. And uh, inside here I'm gonna say our location. But I have a couple cool things in there. I have the small tag. If you remember, I told you earlier that inside any of the level four, uh, sorry, inside of any of the headings, you can put a small tag and have kind of a subheader style text within it. So I'm gonna put more like our favorite 
And that's how you spell favorite properly, at least if you're Canadian. Surf spot. Save. All right, there's actually one more thing left. There's a, um, I actually want to put a glyph icon. So let's open glyph icons and find out if there's like a little map marker, like one of those little pins. This is exactly what I want. So I want to find out what this is called. Glyph icon map marker. All right. So I select that by going span. We're going to use a glyph icon class. Whoops. Glyph icon and glyph icon dash map dash marker. Save. Let's go check that out. There we go, our location, more like our favorite surf spot. So there's a little map marker using the glyph icon. That's cool. Okay, and let's add a paragraph tag. And what's really cool about Coda 2, the code editor I'm using, is that I can uh, quickly add lorem ipsum text. Just by typing lorem and then tab, it'll fill out some lorem ipsum text if I don't have anything to write. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that a couple times. Just a couple paragraph tags with some text in there. You can use hipster ipsum, lorem ipsum, you could write real words, whatever. Save that. Just so we don't get confused, I'm going to say end tab pane. Save that, go back to your website. All right, so there's some text here. It's not looking like tabbable content yet, but we'll get there. Okay, back in our HTML. Actually, I just noticed something. Uh, I spelt you might have seen it, but I didn't. So good for you if you did. I spelt uh, nav tabs instead of putting nav tabs, and that's why our tabbable content isn't showing up correctly. So not nav tabs, but nav tabs. Let's go back to the website, refresh. This is already looking so much better. So let's go back here, and we're going to add something really cool um, to our... Uh, tab content, we're going to add a Google map, like an actual interactive real Google map. We're going to embed it uh, in this tab content. So it's really easy to do that. Just go to Google Maps or maps.google.com or .ca, doesn't really matter, and type in the location you'd like to have in your map. So I put Waikiki Beach because I like that place. And click on this little link icon up in the corner here and click customize and preview embedded map and choose custom however um, we're going to change the height and width in our actual html because google doesn't allow you to choose percentages so let's just say we want the height to be 200 pixels and the width just put i don't know, just put 200 for now we're going to change it after so copy this code right here and go back to your uh, index.html and paste it right here, uh, right after your level four heading. And let's remove this small tag and the break tag. That just says view larger map and just opens a link. We don't need that. And width, instead of just 200, put 100% and save that. And now if you go back to your website and refresh, you should have your Google map in here and it's totally interactive like this. So that's our Google map for our first section of this tab content. Let's have a little look here on the final website. So yeah, that looks pretty much identical. I just have a little bit different of a map. That's okay because you'll have a different map too. We could change it here. We could zoom in, zoom out. Oh, I don't want Google Earth. Like so. Pretty cool. All right, so let's see here. Now we're actually going to add the second tab pane. So tab two, not just tab one. Let's do tab two. Okay, so let's add div. Give it the class of tab dash pane. Close that and tab pane. And also give it the ID of tab two so that the tab two link can target this content. In between uh, these tags, let's add a level four heading. And uh, inside that, let's say a left floated p 
picture. And let's add a small tag within there. So have a little subheading within that header using placehold. And I'm going to add a little dummy image and a really cool way that you can add dummy images without, without saving and exporting them in Photoshop and taking up uh, space in your images folder. If you just want a temporary uh, image, you could just add um, a placehold.it image. It's a website, placehold.it. And it's a really quick and simple image placeholder. And you just have to use uh, a URL like this. And you could choose the height and the width like this and uh, paste it. And you can do a bunch of other extra things if you wanted to. So go to placeholder.it. It and so all you need to do is uh, in your source of the image tag, just go placehold dot it, and uh, I'm just going to make it 140 pixels by 140 pixels. You just need to add one number uh, to have them both be the same height and width. And let's give it the class of thumbnail. This is a bootstrap class that will make the image have kind of a cool thumbnail look to it. So let's save that and I'll show you what that looks like. So in your second tab down here, click on ta uh, section two, and uh, there you go. There's the there's the left. There's right. There's the thumbnail. So let's add more stuff. I'm gonna add a couple paragraph tags with some lorem ipsum in there, just as an example. Save. Okay. So there is the text. And then after this, we're actually um, going to add a horizontal rule. So hr. And we're gonna add a button. And we're not going to make the button do anything yet, but it's going to trigger a modal window. And I'll explain what that is in, in the next lecture, but let's just add the button first. Okay, so ahref, it's going to target my modal. And we'll get to that, in, uh, like I said, in the next lecture, but just add it for now. And we'll continue after. Roll, button, class, button, button warning to get that orange button. Data toggle, modal. And inside of here, click for a modal window. But I also want to add uh, a glyph icon. So span class glyph icon, glyph icon, hand dash up. Say, close that there. Save. Close the span tag actually and save. And let's see what this looks like so far. Section two. And there's the button. Right there, here's the horizontal rule, the text, the image. Now the image is not left floated yet. So we can do that by simply adding another class to the thumbnail and uh, that class will be pull-left and that will float this left. So let's see if it worked. And there it is, it's floated left. However, it's too tight right here. We need to fix that. We need to use some CSS to give some space around this image. So go back to your code editor. So open your style sheet and down in the global style section, add a class and target the image, the class of thumbnail and give it that image margin, zero, 20, 10 and zero. Save that and check out the website. Go to section two, and there you go. That looks much better. Okay, so that's it for the content of the tabable, the tab section. But we're uh, in the next lecture. We're going to code the modal window, and the modal window looks like this. So we're actually going to code this in the next lecture. So I'll see you there.